Hey there, I'm Black Bright and just a quick video. Um, I've been getting quite a few um, emails and it's almost like, um, you know, the saying, the wrong you do catches up with you or I forget the phrase. Anyway, it's like that. And, you know, when you think about years and years ago, people did try to fiddle the system. You know, it went without saying some people thought they could get married and, you know, be with a woman and then cheat on her or, you know, try to manipulate her until they got their stay. Or you'd find those who had children and who might try to um, get the child registered in someone else's name in order to get their stay. There were so many different ways that people would try to, you know, um, what do you call it? Cheat the system. Yeah, we'll call it cheat the system for want of a better word. And, you know, and it just for, for some reason, it didn't seem like a big deal back then. It didn't seem like a big deal. People did it because they thought they could get away with it. And they did get away with it and they have gotten away with it for such a long time. But what happens now? Now you're settled now you thought you were safe. Now you thought everything was hunky-dory and you've established yourself here. And all of a sudden, those things that you did, that you didn't think anything of, have come to bite you on the bum. You know, especially with those people who got married to um, British citizens. And then as soon as they got married, they chipped. They went off and left. And went off, either they bought somebody else over after they got their papers or whatever they did. But that's what they did. They deliberately married somebody from this country to, in order to get their stay when they knew that they didn't like the person or love the person. And that was their ulterior motive. Now, what's going to happen now? Yes, you can be in the country for so long, but you know what? You won't be able to be naturalised. And you won't be able to stay in the country indefinitely. And for those of you who have not um, reported that the marriage has broken down and then you're going to apply for an extension, you're going to be up the creek because they're going to want to see your spouse's passport. And they're going to want to see evidence that you're still with the person that you got your stay with. Because it's fine... Um, saying, OK, getting married, getting your papers. But the whole point of you entering the country was based on the fact that you got married to that British citizen. That's what gave you the license to remain in the country. That marriage didn't work. And you've left that person and you've gone on about your merry way that you're no longer eligible to be in the country. Also, if you've divorced that person and you've gone to marry someone else, did you tell the did you tell the um, the immigration officers that that marriage didn't work? Did it last longer than five years? If it lasted longer than five years, you might get away with it. But if it only if it was one of these ones that only lasted a couple of years, then you might be in trouble. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of things we do in desperation. Sometimes we think we're being slick about a certain thing. And, you know, we don't look at times like these when everything is under the microscope. Literally everything is under the microscope. And then, you know, you're looking for lawyers to say, OK, they can get you out. But the thing is, is that misrepresentation is a big thing. Um, on the application forms, misrepresentation, deceit and anything you've said wrong on your previous applications and it's not consistent with what is happening now. You know, so I don't know when you if, if I get um, questions about things like that, there's nothing I can really suggest because unless, like I said in another video, unless the government makes a mistake, but if you're the one that's made a mistake, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get through the system. Very, well, almost impossible.
if they pick up any kind of deception or you've got into the country or you haven't notified them about any changes in your circumstances, it's going to be very difficult for you. Anyway, um, like I always say, every situation is unique. There's always exceptional circumstances. Um, immigration lawyers are there to advise you um, on your individual circumstance. I am simply a mouthpiece who um, has done some research and from what I see that is a blanket statement but like I said there's always exceptions to the rule and you should always see an immigration lawyer um, when it comes to that because a lot of times this is my opinion um, but yeah sometimes I just think to myself you know if you've lied on a form if you've done if you've done something wrong in the past if you managed to get into this country deceitfully I can't see what a lawyer can do for you and all I see is that someone's going to take your money and you know you're going to be left without you're not, you're not going to win a case that's the way I see it but like I said I'm, I'm not all seeing I'm not omnipotent I don't know the loopholes and so there could be I mean they do have this article 8 but a lot of times that's being thrown out anyway a lot of it is being thrown out and they do have the continuous over 20 years. So you just never know. You just never know. But I think it's the depth of the deception because it goes against the moral character. Can you be trusted in this country? And so that is the stumbling block and why a lot of people don't get through. So that's why I'm throwing it out there again. But like I said, you're welcome to ask me questions. You're welcome to email me at Black Bright News at gmail.com the spelling is underneath the bottom and yeah i'm more than happy to advise bye bye